Hi guys, back with another video. In this video, we're going to discuss the code courses around 853 contest, 855 contest that was rated for Dev3. Now, this particular contest is not rated for me. Uh, me right now, having ranked 249 globally, but it's not fully rated. So, I was able to solve all these questions from A to F. I haven't seen the G question because I just want to make a video now and get over with it. So, with that, let's get started. So, the problem A is actually an easy one. The only emphasis I'll put over here is to explain you the logic behind it so the problem states that you are given a string now you have to detect whether the string actually represents the noise of a cat now a cat actually meows right so it has to be some number of m's followed by some number of e's followed by some numbers of o and followed by some number of w's uh, over here the lowercase and capital capitalized letters actually mean uh, the same right so for example this is valid this is valid this is valid this is valid because the w is coming before right it should have come at the end this is also is invalid because w is missing altogether this is invalid because it has to be m e o w not m o e w i hope you got the drill right but my entire focus would be actually to explain you a clean way of doing it there might be uh, even you know better ways of doing it but i find this way to be somewhat clean so i'll be ex explaining this so what I'm doing is that I'm making mapping. So what do I mean by map mapping? So I'm saying that from M, I can go to E. From E, I can go to O. From O, I can go to W, right? So that's what the mapping is. Firstly, I'm checking that the first character should not be uh, should not be anything other than M. So this is a basic functionality which you can use to turn the uppercase letters into the lowercase letters. So that's what I'm using. So if it's not equal, if it's not equal to M, so because the starting has to be always M, if it's not equal to M, I can directly print a no, right? After that, what I'm checking is that check for the current character. If the current character is equal to the last character, then well and, uh, well and good, let's move to the next character. If it's not equal, then the mapping should satisfy. So we either we would have moved from M to E, from E to O, or from O to W. If that is not being satisfied, print a no right there and return. Else, update the last character. And at the end, you also have to check that the ending of the uh, string was at a W at least. If it's so, then print a yes. If it's not, then print a no. Cool. so that was it for problem a let's move to problem b now uh i'll be actually discussing the problems in a bit faster fashion i hope that you have already gone through the questions if that's not the case then i'll advise you to go through the questions first cool so the problem b states that count the number of pairs and for the number of pairs so you'll be given a string right so a valid pair is a combination of a lowercase character and an uppercase character so for example you can combine this a with the bigger a the small a with the a right so when you get a uh, when you uh, make a pair, you get rewarded for that, right? Also, you can perform k moves. So in any move, you can convert either a lowercase character to uppercase character or uppercase character to a lowercase character. Now, for example, over here, like this becomes a pair. Then this is a pair. This a and this a is pair. So is uh, this c and this c and this b and this b, right? And you can also perform two operations to um, make it a uh, like. To ch uh, change one of the lowercase characters to uppercase character or uppercase character to a lo lowercase characters. I don't know why I was uh, I was getting uh, like wrong answers over here. The only thing I actually changed. I'll have to do some research over here why it's happening is. Uh, it could be the case that when you have not populated your another uh, maps with some values and you are trying to reference it, then somehow in some situation it gives you a non-negative value as well. I'm not sure if that happens, but yeah, pro uh, probably that was happening. And because of that, I was getting a wrong answer. So I did a lot of debugging and stuff. But the logic here is pretty simple. So the logic is, give me a second. Good. So the logic over here is that, let's say you have X amount of A's, or X amount, uh, A over here is just an example, right? And you have Y amount of capital A's. So what you can do is that you can check whichever is the maximum. So let's say X is minimum over here. So this is minimum and this is maximum. This is the smaller a, this is the capital A. Cool. So you will say that uh, x and x, so x pairs or x number of a's I can use. And since y is greater than equal to x, right? So I can also use x number of capital A's, right? So I can have pairs, x number of pairs, right? Direct, uh, directly. Now I'll be left with y minus x occurrences of capital A. Cool. So for this y minus x occurrences, I can change them to small a right but how many occurrences should i change because i want to make pairs so it makes sense for me to change x x minus y by two occurrences and rest would remain same so now i'll be having x minus y by two a's 
and x minus y by 2 capital A which were not changed not changed and this was what I transformed however I cannot uh, 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 like do infinite number of operations so what I'll have to check is that this particular value should be minimum of or the number of changes I'm gonna do should be minimum of this or k right and every step I'll have to decrement my k so I'll do k minus equal to changes because k is the total number of changes I can do so yeah, that's it uh, the code is also similar although I did some debugging so it's not that neat now so let me get to the code okay so what I'm doing in the code is that firstly I'm storing all the values so over here I'm storing all the values then I'm checking if it's a lowercase character then get the uppercase character for it then check what it frequency was then get the difference and then you say that how many characters can you use or how many characters you can change actually so it would be the minimum of the difference divided by two or the number of changes you can actually make then your result gets incre incremented by the minimum of whatever the frequency was right plus if you can use it and then you'll have to decrement uh, your total number of operations that you can perform by uh, the number of operations you have performed in this particular uh, for this particular character and then set the frequencies of both the values to zero so that you don't operate it again yeah that's it and do same for uh, the uppercase as well right cool uh, with that let's get to the problem c now problem c1 is kind of easy c1 and c2 are related the only difference is about the constraints so the problem c uh, they say that the problem c2 is a hard version but it's fairly easy I i'll tell you why so what the problem states is that you are having a deck on the deck you can have two types of card one is the hero card okay so yeah one is the hero card and one is the bonus card now bonus card has a positive value the hero card tends to have a value equal to zero now you take a deck uh, card after out of the deck place it on your hand and if it's a bonus card then you can not do anything with it but if it's a hero card then what happens is that its own value is zero so uh, whatever the card is there in your hand right now like whatever card you had placed before it right which is there on your hand so its values so let's say the card you had already placed on your hand had a value of three so its value gets copied onto your hero card and that particular value is uh, that particular value gets added to your score so you have to maximize your score that way so over here you can see that uh, if you placed all these cards like right, three 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 then uh, this deck came it would say that okay the top card is actually three so the value added would be three now this would also get discarded so now currently you have three three on your deck then this card comes the hero card comes and he says that okay what's the top value in your deck so it says the value is three so three gets added to it and your value becomes six and you return it uh, in this case at the starting itself you get a hero card but there's no card in your hand so nothing gets added then you get a three and a three so you place that on your hand then you get a zero and a zero so this is cool enough so for this zero I utilize this three right Th that uh, that is the card only on my uh, already on my hand and this would get discarded then for this zero the top currently on my hand would be this particular card so I'll utilize this and the value would become six I hope that's easy to understand if it's not try to uh, like write down uh, write down on a piece of paper uh, you'll definitely be able to understand this this is e quite easy to understand now how can we solve this now this is actually a typical greedy question let me tell you an easy approach for this so what i'm saying is uh yeah so this is the array that you're having right so let's say this is three three then you have some zeros then you have some let's say another zeros then you have some four four then let's say you have a zero and what uh, all that stuff right so for this particular zero i'll have to write a value right so should it focus over here or over here now you uh, because you know the solution so you'll say that okay it should fo focus over the first one and the reason is because that's that would be the top of the deck so you'll be having two cards three and three now one important thing over here that i kind of missed while explaining the question is that you can also discard a card so you can say okay i don't want a th three over here for example if the cards were like uh three one and zero so eventually it would make sense for you to have a three right and then when one comes to be placed on top of it you'll say that i know i'll discard a one and then when a zero will come so you'll get uh, you'll say that okay the uh, topmost card is actually three so i'll be getting an answer of three so yeah, you can also discard cards but what i'm saying is that a very better approach is to, to actually uh, save the cards that you are getting and have a non-negative non value or they are the bonus card to save all the cards right and then whenever you get a zero 
you select the maximum value possible over here when you get a zero you'll say that okay wh what were the cards behind me so i'll say that the ca cards behind me were three three what's the maximum value from this this is a three okay let's use it for my answer and discard it that's easy to do via priority or a maxi or you could have used a sets you could you can do uh, you could have used a lot of data structures for this but your max tends to become a obvious choice over here then you'll come over here and then you'll say that okay so what's left now you'll say that okay three three is left let's discard that now one could argue that what if now let's say this was the thing you are having four three and then a zero zero now you come up with a card and over here uh, you'll say that the, okay so four and three are available till the time you'll reach here you'll say that four and three are available so zero would say give me the maximum you'll give four to three or oh, sorry four to this zero and then you'll say that okay you reach over here so what's the maximum left so three is left so the answer is seven right seven is the correct answer but now you say for this particular zero i'm assigning the first four itself that is not valid so in the in the scenario what should have happened is that four would have been placed over here three would have been placed over here zero would have come so the first zero that is this one it would have come it would have asked for a value so you would have given him three right and this zero would have come it would come over here it will ask for a value so you'll give him four so in total you'll be getting seven but how come this happened so the easy uh, explanation to that is that i'll i i, I can easily re uh, easily rearrange it right so if i'm assigning uh, in my solution if i'm assigning zero to with this particular value right and then another value comes to be, uh, which is zero that also expects a value then i can say that okay the previous value which i was getting you can take that that thing if there's a value next uh, to the right of it i can take that so the answer would anyway remain unchanged because irrespective if your uh, like zero at index 3 exists or in, uh, at index 2 exists accesses it or the zero at index 3 accesses it the value is going to be same right so this and by that logic it makes sense if you still have doubts in this let me know in the comment section below but yeah that's the logic for this so the good thing is that if you are using this particular logic so this has a time complexity of order of n log n and since c1 and c2 both only differed in the uh, constraints so over here in c2 in the problem c2 that's the hard version in the problem c2 n can go up to 2 to 10 to the power 5 right over uh, in the c1 it could go up to 5000 But anyway, n log n time complexity can work for two into ten to the power five as well. So this particular solution would give you AC for both the uh, uh, both the problems. So over here you get an AC for this. That's the exact thing I'm implementing. So firstly, I'm taking the input. If it's greater than zero, I'm storing it my in my uh, max heap. If it's not equal to zero, then I'm checking if the max heap already has a size. That means there's some element at least in max heap. Then I'll be utilizing that particular element and I'll be popping that out. At the end, I'll be Uh, returning the result. I think that's cool. Okay, so the next is remove two letters. This, I guess, is an easy problem. It's much easier than uh, see, uh, see if you kind of understand it. Cool. So the problem states that you have to remove two characters. Now you will be given a string, right? So let's say this is a string. You can remove any two consecutive characters from it, right? So when you remove the two consecutive characters, then the remaining strings are appended. So what do I mean by that? So let's say this is the string A B C D E F G H. Now I removed C D right. So the remaining string is A B E F G H right. Now let's say from this string I had actually removed E F. So the remaining string would have been A B C D G H right. So in this way we can remove any two consecutive characters we want right. And we have to tell them that what are the uh, number of strings we can perform by using these operations. So this was the question. Now, a uh, easy way, uh, like a uh, brute force way, would would have been to remove two characters, then to check for the string and check for this string, right? This would have been the string, let's say a naught or a dash, and this would have been the string a double dash. You would have added a dash with a double dash, and would have checked that th uh, this kind of string has already been checked or not. If it has been checked, uh, then don't increment my answer. If it has not been checked, then increment my answer. This would uh, but give you a TLE because the size of the string is itself n. right and you will be doing this operation uh, for n minus 2 times right so it will give you a tle now what's the other way around so what i can say is that let's say i'm replacing this uh, i'm using this string a1 a2 a3 a4 right if i'm removing this particular element right let me say just to make it 
more easier to understand let's say i'm removing this right and in other case i'm removing this cool now in case my a1 and a3 are same so let's see what happens if i remove the red thing i mentioned so the string uh, i get is a0 a3 a4 a5 if i remove the green thing i mentioned then the string i get is a0 a1 a4 a5 over here a0 and a, uh, a4 a5 are same right the only difference is a3 and a1 now if a3 is equal to a1 in that case when i re, uh, when i construct this particular string i can say that all, uh, i would have already seen, seen a similar string that would have been this right so yeah that's the logic so if your a3 and a1 are same then you can say that already so this was the index equal to 0 this was 1 2 3 4 5 when you were at index 1 you would have tried to remove this right and you would have got this particular string and when you are at index 3 you would try to remove uh, you would try to remove this okay, sorry when you are at index 2 sorry you will try to remove the next two characters and you will get three, uh, this so at index 2 you will say that if a0 and uh, sorry a1 and a3 are same then the string that would have uh, that i would have produced and index i equal to 1 would be the same as the current string so in that case i have already counted it let's not count it again so that's it that uh, this is actually a pretty simple question so let me uh, show you the code the code even looks simpler so the code basically is that this is this is the code like just think about it it's a problem d or you can call it a problem e because c1 and c2 were there and still it has such a simple code so what i am doing is that result is definitely gonna be one because there's always gonna be one way of doing it right now in case your index at i plus one and i minus one in the case we discussed it was a3 and a1 right so if these two indexes are not indices are not equal in that case increase my result else don't increase it add then just print my result that's it about this question there's no trick nothing required just a small observation cool i hope you understood this let's get to even